this video, we will talk about morphological parameters that is essential for local scale climate modeling in urban areas and how to use UMAP and QGIS to uh, extract uh, some of these uh, values and parameters. In UMAP, you have a number of tools to do this. Under urban morphology, you can either calculate for a grid or a point, or even as a source area. Uh, if we open the grid uh, morphometric calculator, uh, you can see that you need a local scale grid that was created in a previous video for this. And in this one, you need an ID a unique feature, which is the ID that automatically comes with the grid when you create it. And you need your digital surface model and elevation models. And uh, what is good here is that you can click in this tick box here, and then you get the values directly into your attribute table for your grid. I have already done this, so I will open the attribute table for this grid and we can see what we have uh, got here. Uh, these are the parameters that are calculated with this morphometric calculator. So we have plan area index, frontal area index and so on. And in the end also we have zero place displacement height and roughness length. Um, one other feature or parameter that is usually interesting to derive is what we call the height to width ratio. So the mean width of streets and the mean height of uh, buildings. To do this, uh, we can make use of different tools, both in UMAP and in QGIS to uh, extract this. To do this, we are going to use a, a equation which transforms the 3D environment into the non-dimensional height-to-width ratio. This is the equation you see here. Uh, it's a little bit complicated and I will not go through how it's derived, but what we need here is the, the two items from equation three and four, which is lambda p, which is the plan area index, and lambda w, which is the same thing, but instead of the, um, the area on the fraction of buildings, we need the fraction or the height area of the walls. To derive this, we can actually use a tool in UMAP, which is found here called wall height and aspect, where you can calculate from a digital surface model height and aspect of all wall pixels. Uh, I have already created this uh, wall height grid uh, digital um, raster. So if we can zoom in a bit here, you can see that it has identified a number of walls and calculated the height for each. Now we want to extract all this information into the grids uh, and uh, that we can do by using the processing toolbox. So we use a tool called Sonal Statistics. So I have search for Sonal here and then comes up here. So I click on this and uh, we want to use our wall height raster to calculate this and let's use wall as a prefix. And then we want to calculate the sum and then we click run. Then in each of these vector polygons the total area of the walls is calculated. So if we now look at the attribute table we see a new column here with numbers, quite high numbers. So these should now be normalized by the total area of the grid. So this is one of the main advantages of using vector data in GIS that you can use and manipulate the data using this attribute table which is connected to the spatial data.
So what we want to do now is to create a lambda w column here next to it. Then we can use the field calculator found here. We want to create a new field. We want to call it lambda w. We can have it as a decimal number with maybe two decimals. And what we want to do here is that we want to take the area of the walls and then we would like to divide it by the area of the actual polygons and this can be found in um, let me see in geometry and area and now you can calculate a new data set or a new attribute that you see here in the end and you can see here also that lambda w can be actually higher than one since the total area of walls is not related to the actual lot area or the actual area of the polygon so now we have the plan area index and lambda w so now we can go back and try to calculate the height to width ratio according to this this is um, done again by using the field calculator create a new field let's maybe call it hw and go to make it a real maybe with two decimals so now it's a little bit of the tricky part so we need to try to get all the correct settings as they were so what we want to do is take lambda we p i lambda p times lambda w then we want to divide this by two times lambda p times one minus lambda p like this so this is now should be the same as the equation below just checking so i did the, the right thing and it looks okay and then we can click okay and now we have the next column with height to width ratio and we can go back to I just want to save the editings here of this layer and stop editing. Now we can go in and actually make them look or color them based on height to width ratio. So we go to symbology and use graduated color. We want to use height to width ratio with a we need to have a brush here so we see actual values then we take classify and we can take apply and here we have a variation of height to width ratios within the 500 times 500 meters this was just some small examples on how to derive these morphological parameters using umap and qgis